Mikan brought us and many other members of the photography press to an event in Oregon to review the 45 megapixel full frame D850. It would be better if you horses would look over here. And just bring your arm up and back. We've done a bunch of portrait shoots with the D850, both at Nikon press events and for our own business. It's a workhorse. The colors and skin tones look spectacular. The metering system finds faces and nails the exposure basically every time. The ultra-low base ISO 64 provides cleaner images than other cameras, providing the smoothest skin tones. That looks great. At its base ISO 64, it has the greatest dynamic range of any full-frame camera. I was able to recover these shadows from total darkness. You can recover two and a half stops of blown out highlights too. For portrait and wedding photographers who don't want to deal with the full 45 megapixels, it's easy to scale it down in camera to smaller raw files. So far I love shooting with the D850 as much as I've loved shooting with my D810. It's intuitive and it's got really practical features. Now I can use the touch screen to scroll through my photos and zoom. It's got a rate button which is great when you're shooting a lot of pictures for a portrait shoot. And it's got an amazing lens selection. You can have the best camera in the world. If you don't have good glass to go with it, it's useless. So I'm using the 100mm 1.4. It's handling this backlighting beautifully. It's so crisp though, it's sharp. Check out these pictures. After six months, the D850 has proven to be reliable and powerful enough for professional portrait and wedding use. Nikon's new 70-200 F2.8e overcomes the limitations of its predecessor, and the 105 F1.4 is now our favorite portrait prime. True silent shooting in live view mode helped us get candid street photography, too. I love that the thumbstick allows me to quickly put the focusing point on different eyes and the autofocus system can keep a person in focus even when they're moving like that. That's perfect for weddings and events. The mirrorless Sony a7R 3 has eye detection autofocus so I don't even have to change the AF point. That's even better except that in a side-by-side -side test I found that the D850's focusing accuracy to be about 30% better at nailing focus for close headshots with very shallow depth of field. They both got the job done, however. Okay. Oh, it seems like it's something it's gonna happen. happening. Oh, it's working. Nikon Snapridge is still the worst Wi-Fi app from any of the major camera manufacturers, with Canons being the best. When we need to share pictures from our Nikon, we use an SD card reader into our smartphone or tablet rather than messing with the Wi-Fi app. It gets the job done. A feature that I really enjoy for landscapes is this tilty screen. It means that I can get a lower angle without having to lay on my stomach or awkwardly make the tripod shorter. It also has focus peaking, so I can make sure that my subject is in focus and it has touch focusing, which is really nice. You can even touch and take a picture all in one step. The live view touch focusing isn't perfect. It took a few times for me to get the shot in focus, but it still works better than other Nikon cameras. When you're picking out a camera for landscape, you have to think about the glass that goes with it. Nikon has incredibly sharp wide angle glass for landscape, like the 14 to 24, which we use for most of this trip. So, so far my experiences with the D850 are as impressive as I had hoped that they would be. While the D850's large size makes it more cumbersome than mirrorless cameras, the image quality, durability, and lens selection are unbeatable. It's in silent yeah. mode, so I see a green light, and I guess it's working. It's set up to take pictures every <laughs> second. I just like want to make sure it's yeah. working. Yeah. The mirror doesn't come up, I guess. The mirror just must stay down. I guess it's going. The D850 is the greatest time-lapse camera ever made. Seriously, 45 megapixels lets you create 8K video or do a full two times crop for 4K video, allowing zooms and pans in post-production. To save yourself processing time, the D850 can record time-lapses directly to a 4K video file. However, I found the flickering made these files unusable. I later used silent mode to schedule a time-lapse from my hotel room without waking myself up. The screen even turns off to maximize battery life. The Sony a7R 3 doesn't have a time-lapse feature at all. You have to use a separate intervalometer. I would never choose the D850 as a dedicated video camera. I would miss the electronic viewfinder and flip forward screen of my Panasonic GH5. But as a hybrid shooter who switches between stills and video, 
The D850 is a great choice. The 4K video is gorgeous, available both full frame and with a 1.5 times crop, and even cleaner than the Sony a7R III. While it lacks the smooth focusing of the Canon 5D Mark IV, the ability to shoot without a crop and use a real video codec make it a much better video camera than the Canon for the way most people shoot. Of course, the lack of sensor stabilization means walking shots aren't as smooth as mirrorless cameras. The focus tracking while recording video is better than the other Nikons that we've seen, but you probably wouldn't want to use it while shooting action. The $3,300 Nikon D850 is a jack of all trades, but is it a master of sports? We shot over 3,000 frames of motocross, kayaking, and soccer at both day and night to put it to the test. Okay, the audio was a little rough at this Nikon press event, but you can buy a $400 vertical grip, a $200 battery, and a $30 charger to speed the D850 from 7 frames per second to 9. When shooting sports, you're going to come across problems with lighting. The lighting might not always be ideal, you can't always move the athletes, but the great dynamic range on the D850 allows you to bring up the shadows if you want, or you can use high-speed sync and a flash like I'm using, and I'm just filling in the shadows. You can easily configure this camera to have two AFON buttons. That means you can have two different autofocusing modes, and that's incredibly helpful for wildlife and sports photography. It buffers at about 40 full frame raw shots, which means aggressive shooters need to carefully budget your shooting to avoid missing the best moment. If you switch to JPEG or DX mode, the buffering problems disappear. DX mode lets me crop in camera 1.5 times, producing 20 megapixel pictures. It's like they packed a D500 into my full frame camera, and the digital zoom essentially turns my 70 to 200 into a 70 to 300 without a teleconverter. I deserve it. <laughs> After having two Canon 5D cameras ruined in a sudden rainstorm, we understand the importance of weather sealing to outdoor photographers. Compared to the Sony a7R III, the D850 seems to have much better weather sealing. If you need high megapixels and you need to be out in any conditions, the D850 is your best choice. The Lightroom has gotten faster, building previews for thousands of 45 megapixel pictures remains a torturous, time-consuming process. If you don't need the megapixels, you can drop the resolution in camera and speed up processing while reducing your storage costs. If you're a Nikon D810 sport shooter, upgrade to the D850 for the better focusing system and to get 80% more frames per second with the vertical grip but don't upgrade for the image quality on action shots. We really couldn't tell a difference shooting handheld with a Nikon 7200 F28E, either at ISO 64 or ISO 6400. In practice, in the real world, the movement during action shots will negate the extra detail of the higher megapixel sensor. The closest competitors are Nikon's purpose-built sports cameras, the $1900 D500 and the $6500 D5. The D500 is half the price of the D850 with grip, and it shoots a full 10 frames per second. However, the D500 has a permanent 1.5 times crop. When you can't get close enough and need to crop anyway, the two cameras produce essentially identical images at any ISO. The D850, however, gives you the choice to shoot full frame when you want to, providing cleaner and sharper pictures, especially at higher ISOs. That'll make a huge difference in image quality during night games and dimly lit indoor sports. The D850 is the better camera, but if you're just shooting your kids' games, the D500 will give you good enough results for half the price. Nikon's 3D focusing uses the camera's metering system to track subjects as they move around the frame across multiple focusing points. In our testing, 3D focusing on the D5 and D500 was amazing, blowing away similar features in Canon and Sony cameras. But the D850, despite having the same focusing system as the D5 and D500, just didn't do as good of a job it constantly lost track of subjects, even jumping to players on the other team with different colored jerseys, or even to the background. It caused us to miss so many shots that we turned off 3D focusing and used the thumbstick to manually select the focusing point. If you love 3D focusing in other cameras, you might not be happy with it on the D850. 
In summary, the D850 is our favorite DSLR of all time. The only camera that even comes close is the Sony a7R 3 Subscribe and click the notification bell to watch our upcoming comparison. For detailed information about image quality and wildlife photography, watch these two videos. Watch this video for a free tutorial for the D850 and about 50 other popular cameras. If you want to improve your photography but you don't have thousands of dollars to upgrade your gear, you can get our photography book for $20. It includes 14 hours of video never before seen here, and we have a bunch of tips and techniques that you've probably never seen before. So check it out in the link below.